So we're from Property Hub, yet we're about to tell you why property is a terrible way to make money. Well, have we lost our mind? We are about to find out. In this video, we actually do explain why property is a terrible way to make money. So let's start this off. Let's go through the different property strategies that you can take on and explain why as a way of making money, at least, it's not that effective. Yeah, so take this concept and make it a bit more real. Let's consider a particular objective. It's a really common objective as well, which is make an extra £2,000 a month. Property really is a terrible way of going about achieving that goal. So let's look at why that's the case by considering some of the main approaches that people use. So let's start with the most bog standard version of buy to let you could possibly have. You just buy properties, do nothing with them, don't do anything clever, rent them out, rental income comes in, that's it. This is a strategy that we love because it's safe, it's predictable, it does get great results over the long term. But in terms of actually getting to that goal of making £2,000 a month, it's a shocker because to achieve that based on the typical yield that you'd expect from a property, assuming you're not going to be reinvesting anything or buying at a discount or any of that, that, which you could of course do to reduce this amount but without doing any of that you'd need over two hundred fifty thousand pounds and that is kind of insane as a way to make money it's like oh yeah i want to make a bit of money how do i start well i'll just invest the two hundred fifty thousand i've already got if you are sitting on that kind of capital you're probably not having these kind of conversations so as a way to make money it's a terrible one because it requires you to have a vast amount of money to start with of course, we are only talking about the income side of property here, but it doesn't help you out with that initial goal. If you are going to refinance your portfolio, for example, to tap into some of that growth, well, that's going to take years. And if you are chasing this objective to make some kind of meaningful change in your lifestyle, like I talked about, you're probably not going to want to be waiting years. So Rob, buy to let is not the only strategy. There are others available. And it's just as well, because clearly it is not a good way of hitting that goal. So if the old faithful buy to let isn't effective for making money and you want to make money what other property options do you have so next on the list is refurb refinance where you buy a property that needs some sort of work it may be cosmetic or structural maybe a bigger job and you spend your time on that project and you improve the property hopefully if it's come right you add value and then that allows you to refinance and in this example, you're going to keep the property and then reinvest the capital into another project. So that first property will then give you rental income and then you go on and do the next project. Now, this definitely speeds things up, but it's hard to do. First of all, you need capital to start with. So you might not have the 250K. So maybe that's why you do this strategy. So you can build the portfolio up. But realistically, for most people, doing one of these projects a year is the max. So you have this one project a year, which is stressful. If you do this strategy, then every year you have to endure another refurb project. But it's going to take a while to get to where you need to be. It's going to take a lot of refurb projects for you to get to the point where you're earning enough rental income from your portfolio to make that 2k a month. So it's not dismissing it as a strategy entirely, far from it, but as a way of hitting our target of 2k a month, it's not very effective at all. And exactly the same for what we're going to cover next, which is doing flips. So you buy a property, refurb it, but rather than doing the what we were talking about before, which was refinancing it so you could release cash to go again, you sell that property and pocket the cash and use that to live off. Now, the benefit of flips is that it is pretty quick as things go, but there are issues with it as well. So the first one is, again, you need the cash to start with, a common theme. Something we've talked about in the past is about how time is one of your best friends in property, because even if things don't go optimally, time tends to sort everything out. With a flip, you don't have that luxury. And of course, there's so much more that can go wrong with a project that can leave you not making any money or indeed making a loss. So you need to go all in straight away with all your cash, take on loads of risk on a project. If it doesn't go well, you've got a problem. If it does go well, that's great, but that is a one-off payment. So when we're talking about the previous strategies, you do build up income that you keep on getting paid every month. With flips though, it's one off. There is no recurring element. So it's more of a business than it is an investment. You're in the business of flipping property. But as a business, it's a really tough one to get into because you're making these one-time sales with loads of risk that involve tying up a large amount of capital. So again, like with all of these, flips can be great, but as a way to make money for most people, not so great. So some of you may be thinking, well, I know the answer. 
and it's rent to rent because that is the income generating strategy amongst property. And actually, out of everything we've talked about today, rent to rent probably is the way to make short term income. However, rent to rent is not easy. Now, rent to rent, if you don't know, is a strategy where you will approach your landlord, so you don't own the property, and you will take it off them and pay them a level of rent. And then you will rent the individual rooms out for a higher amount in total, if they are all let and you don't have any vacancies. And the difference that you make is the profit. The challenge that you have is that depending on the area and the type of property that you use for rent to rent, you're going to need anywhere from sort of four to 10 to be able to make that 2K a month. So you have to find those properties. Now finding a landlord who's willing to let you take their property and then individually rent their rooms out is no easy feat. There isn't a website for it where it's all listed and all the landlords are there just waiting to give you the properties. It's hard work. And that is a business endeavor in itself, sourcing these properties. And then you'll need to spend money on marketing and networking. Your time investment is huge arguably probably bigger than refurbs and flips because you will have to be pretty much full-time. So you're basically giving yourself a full-time job to hit the 2K, where I'm sure for most people, they could earn more than 2K a month through their own work. Now, that's just acquiring the properties. Once you've got them, you don't put your feet up and go, I've done it. You then have to manage them. So you will have dozens upon dozens of tenants that you have to manage and look after. So it's touted as the option for people who want to make income from property quickly without too much capital. But if you value your time, then your capital deployment is huge. And the amount of time that you'll be giving means that you could probably be earning a lot more money from doing another job. So as the one strategy in property that's probably best set up for you to make 2K a month, to me, it's a lot of hard work. So Rob, I think this is like the key distinction. The reason that property is a terrible way to make money is that property is an investment and investments are a terrible way of generating money in the short term. But as an investment, property's great. Yeah, to me, it's amazing. As an investment, property is absolutely brilliant. When you consider leverage, you consider how it hedges you against inflation, you know, it's track record, all the benefits that property brings. So at the beginning of the show, we promised to give you some ideas of how to create 2K a month, if that's something that you wanted to do. And But we've made it quite clear that the way to do it is through a business and it's not through investment. So Rob, we've teased it enough. Let's give some examples of how people could make 2K a month in a lot easier way than trying to do it through property. So for example, you could start offering a service. What could that service be? It could be anything depending on what your skills are. And you could start that with absolutely zero capital today and you could sign a £2,000 a month contract tomorrow and bang, you've achieved your goal. Of course, it very rarely is that easy, but the point is it's possible. You can do it with no money and you can get there very quickly. The same is true for online businesses. So for example, you could start an e-commerce store today with probably less than £100. You need very little in terms of capital. You don't need any stock because you can just drop ship it all. You can be up and running and making sales today. But that lack of capital isn't a barrier to you scaling to profits of £2,000 a month and far beyond. There will be plenty of people who fail to do that, but it can be done. And there's a million other types of online business as well. So you can sell informational products. Again, you can get started with absolutely no money whatsoever and your sales can be anything. It's unlikely you're going to get to £2,000 a month in your first few months because it's really hard. And with any of these businesses, there are skills that you need to acquire. But again, it's the same with property. You don't just go into property and start absolutely nailing how to do it from day one and executing flawlessly. It's the same with any of these businesses. It's the same thing. But the capital requirement isn't there and the timeline is naturally shorter. So with ways to make 2K a month through business, you're really just limited by your imagination. None of this is expected to be easy. Sometimes you're lucky, but most of the time it does require work and there is no guarantee of success. But you can start and you can try. So if you are mainly driven by the goal to make more money quickly in a short space of time, then property, as we've established, is not the way to go. But my word, once you've made a bit of cash, even just a bit, getting it into property is a great thing to do. It really is an amazing asset class. And that's why Rob and I use it for our own investments and wealth creation. 
But if you've got something useful from this video, you'll get so much more from the Property Podcast, where every week we bring you what investors really need to know. You can listen anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Just search Property Podcast.